Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a response to this video, which I saw a few of the uh, apostles and elders did responses to it as well. You know, uh, here he goes again. Okay, here goes the Christian, you know, uh, superhero himself. You know, Vocab Malone, he's back. You know, pestering another uh, Israelite. Okay, uh, which I've never heard of this guy, but, you know, the, the title of the video is called Calm Christian vs. Polite Hebrew Israelite 101. And here he is. He's going at a, a Israelite again. All right. On the same topic of the Gentiles. And, you know, really, you know, he's listening to this message. He's listening to us bring out the prophecies. He's seeing what's going on. And really, he's, you know, and he's sent, of course, but he's really looking for a way all right, to get a get a victory because this this word condemned him. It condemns him night every night. He's he's figuring trying to figure out a way to, you know, make us look bad every day. And that's all right. You know, um, we need this sort of uh, opposition. All right. So that we can edify because you do have a lot of our people who are leaving the Christian church who need edification on these particular arguments and the Gentiles. And, you know, which when Jake was in church, we didn't really they didn't go into the, the Gentiles and this and that. They, You know, these are fairly new concepts to a lot of people who even were going to church. <laughs> Especially if you went to a so-called black church. They don't really teach you the Bible. But anyway, he's reading out of Ephesians, the second chapter. And that's what, you know, apostles, elders, this brother, you know, uh, Karataza of uh, GMS uh, Vegas sit downs, 144K. GMS Vegas sit downs, 144K. Subscribe and be edified. And he did a response. And vocab is ultimately saying the book of Ephesians, okay, as we'll get it, because we ain't got to play that guy. The book of Ephesians, as it uh, speaks of the, the Gentiles, the uncircumcision, is speaking of actual heathen. And the heathen were not a part of the first covenant that the Lord made with the Israelites via Moses and Aaron. And, you know, he's not. Uh, none of the heathen are joined to the second covenant. It has nothing to do with them. All right, which was which is ultimately made through Yahawashai's blood. And that's what we're going to get into. You know, the, the, the mystery of the Gentiles. As a matter of fact, let's go to that. All right, this is the book of Colossians 1 and 26. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages. And from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. All right. Among the Gentiles. And that's a narrative, you know, that you have to follow and understand to even understand the Gentiles. OK, among the Gentiles, but it's a mystery. OK, it's a stumbling block. OK. Which is in Hamashiach. All right. <laughs> all right. In you, the hope of glory. So the, the mystery of the Gentiles, which is in Yahawashai Hamashiach, you know, our, our mediator and high priest of that new covenant. In which now we're under a grace period. OK, now what Yahawashai did and we'll get into it is he broke down the middle wall of partition. All right. Under the first covenant. All right. Your only way. All right. Back to the heavenly father was through, you know, animal sacrifice through the sons of Aaron, through the tech, keeping the technicalities of that first covenant. All right. And how would Israel be brought back if the heavenly father didn't have a form of grace and mercy? And that comes through Yahweh Shai. OK, so we're not ultimately uh, judged by the technicalities of that first covenant, but through faith. And that's how the Gentiles will be brought in. 
as you know they were scattered amongst these various different nations and learn these very wicked and despicable ways all right and this topic constantly comes up vocab malone constantly is going up to the israelites and this is their only this is the only thing christians talk about is how that god loves everybody the gentiles and that you can eat every anything you want to eat and esau ain't you know they, they don't say no no other nation is no other nation outside of us not being the nation of israel and esau ain't the so-called white man that's pretty much all they're talking about now john three sixteen. you know and meanwhile look at the world around them they're not these christians ain't using the bible to condemn this world and and to proclaim the lord's judgment they're trying to stop prophecy. You can't stop the Israelites from waking up. It was already written. So when you go into the book of Ephesians, first of all, who is the book of Ephesians written to? Okay. Well, let's go to the book of Ephesians, the first chapter. It says, Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach by the will of the Most High to the saints which are at Ephesus. All right. Now, what is Ephesus? Okay, and I believe this is one of the epistles where Paul was in jail. He was imprisoned. Ephesus. Okay, Ephesos. It means permitted. Okay, it says uh, a maritime city in Asia Minor. All right, capital of uh, uh, Lonia under the Romans. Okay, so this is Roman territory. You know, the Roman Empire. Remember, they conquered. All right, and... Um, and we'll deal with that because the Israelites, according to prophecy, would be scattered, okay, uh, uh, amongst the Roman Empire as well. <laughs> okay, the, the diaspora, the dispersed, it says it's in Asia, situated on the Carian Sea, and so forth. So you had a particular church of Israelites that were among this nation turning back to the Heavenly Father. Okay, and I believe Paul sent Timothy to this church to help build them up. So this this letter is to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Now, who are the saints according to the Holy Scriptures? Okay. Well, first we'll get Psalms 50. Psalms 50 and 5. Okay, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, who was that first covenant for? All you have to do is go to Exodus 24, and uh, you can just start at the top. Okay, and the covenant is made with the Israelites. Okay, and when we go into the scriptures dealing with the second covenant, okay, that, that covenant and that sacrifice was dealing with the Israelites as well to bring them back to the Father contrary to, to that first covenant which ultimately by that covenant we died we had no life in this flesh we couldn't fulfill those technicalities which ultimately kept us separated from the heavenly father so the saints are those who made a covenant with him by sacrifice this is speaking of the israelites okay uh, uh another one leave us psalms Psalms, I believe. Psalms 38, 138, Psalms 1. Yep, this is Psalms 148. There we go. Psalms 148 and 14. He, he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even, which is equal to the same thing, the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise you the Lord. So the saints are the Israelites. Okay. What is a saint? One who one who was sanctified. Okay. And from the foundation of the earth, the Israelites were chosen as the Lord's special people. Who are we? All right. To fight that narrative It's clearly in the Holy Scriptures. That's all Christians do is ultimately find a way to undermine the Heavenly Father's authority. Anyway, let's go back to Ephesians, the the, uh, the first chapter where we were. 
So the saints that are, that are at Ephesus, you'll notice a lot of these uh, epistles are started off, all right, to the chosen that are that are here, to you know, to the saints, to the strangers in Rome. Okay, these are the Israelites who were scattered among these particular places as a result of a curse. Okay, grace be unto you. Okay, and peace from our Father. Okay. <laughs> the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the from the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Now whew. Wow. Anyway, as a matter of fact, we read verse five, it says a court verse four, as according to his as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. By Yahweh Shai to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Now, the word adoption, you're thinking of it in a sense, you know, a, a random child. No, the, uh, the, this word adoption is huetosia. Strong's G, 5206. Huetosia. We are adoption, adoption as sons, that relationship which God was pleased to establish between himself and the Israelites in preference to all the other nations. All right. And it was in and, and that relationship was through covenants. All right. We broke the first covenant. So when you get Ephesians, the sec second chapter. OK, let's get it. Okay, and remember these Israelites were scattered, okay, among these various different nations coming out of idol worship. That's what the Gentiles are. As a matter of fact, we always bring it out in the book of Deuteronomy 28, the curse. All right, now vocab and these guys will say, well, the curse, that, that doesn't apply to you all in any way. Well, does it apply to the Gentiles? Let's read Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of earth, even to the other. And there shall thou serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. All right. And that's what we're going to get into. That's what the Israelites, the Gentiles were doing in the Greco-Roman Empire. Going back to the story of the, the Maccabees, the Greeks, we'll show you all of that. So you got to know a lot of history to understand the Gentiles. You can't just open the Bible at the book of Matthew and say, oh, I, I understand the Gentiles. No. This, this is a narrative. This is a story of a relationship between the Most High and his chosen people, man. Deuteronomy 4 and 27, and the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen. Whether the Lord will, 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 shall lead you and there shall you serve gods, the works of men's hands, wood and stone and so forth. And the narrative continues throughout the whole scriptures, man. Even when you deal with our deliverance. OK, e, uh, Ezekiel 36 and 24, speaking of the house of Israel, Israel to be renewed for his namesake. Verse uh, 22, therefore, say unto the house of Israel. So when you keep reading. Verse 23, it says, and I will sanctify my great name, which profaned among the heathen. How did Israel profane the, uh, the name of the Lord among the heathen? By bowing to other idols. Okay. Which he have profaned in the midst of them. Bowing to their gods, their idols. The heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And it starts with this word. Okay. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. So Israelites have been scattered, all right, in all nations. But among these nations, in the latter days, Israelites will wake up. And among the nations at the time that Paul was on the scene, what was Paul a citizen of Rome? Israelites were scattered in these particular regions. Ezekiel 37 and 21 and, and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone 
and will gather them on every side. Now, when you get the book of Daniel, the seventh chapter, you have the vision of the four beasts, and it gives you these various different captivities. It talks about the Assyrian Babylonian Empire. The Israelites were scattered there. All right, you have the uh, Persians and the Medes. The Israelites were scattered there. We were able to go back to Jerusalem and build the temple, but we were scattered in that captivity. You can read about Esther. It gives you story of particular Israelites among these heathen, whether they're going off or you have a, a hero, someone who's doing right. It's uh, the, the, the Bible is focusing on the Israelites in these nations. OK, then you have what the Greeks, the Greeks, what happened at the time of the Greeks? We'll show you that. We'll get into that as we read further in Ephesians. But I want to make this point. OK, and then you had. The Romans, okay, the fourth beast. And out of that came another little horn that was said to have wore out the saints. So the saints, matter of fact, <laughs> and this is speaking of America, Daniel 7 and 25, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and to think to change times and laws, and it shall be given into his hands. So there you go. The Israelites will be scattered among this captivity. So these beasts, that you read about, all right, or, or rulerships of the heathen where Israelites will be scattered. To prove that, let's get the book of Zechariah, the first chapter. It's four beasts, right? The four horns. This is Zechariah. <laughs> oh, man. I'll just get to the point. Verse 18, then lifted up. I up mine eyes and saw and behold four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel and Jerusalem. All right. Uh, uh, through these various different captivities we read about in Daniel. OK, the uh, seventh chapter. OK, the, these are places where the, the Israelites will be scattered. OK, let's look up the word scattered. Okay. Z Zara to be scattered, to be dispersed. Okay, to be dispersed. Sift. <laughs> he said I will sift, you know, the, the house of Israel among the nations, man. Okay. Uh are strange to be a stranger and, and among these nations we ultimately became you know uh, uh, ooh, a strange woman a prostitute harlot we, be, we we became harlots how did we become harlots through what bowing down to these idols man we became strangers to the covenants and the promises foreigners and we'll show you all of that is going to make sense here just in a minute but it should make sense anyway so these these four horns scattered judah southern kingdom israel the northern kingdom and even the land okay and parted it amongst themselves so these nations would be used as a uh, uh, means where the israelites would be scattered so when you read about Paul and the apostles. Who was in power at that time? The Romans were in power. So the fourth beast, the Roman Empire, Israelites were there. The third beast, the leopard, Israelites were there. Where do you find that history? In the Apocrypha. And it tells you why our people were called uncircumcised. So let's go back to Ephesians, the second chapter, now that we understand some history. Because there's so much more. OK, made alive in the Messiah, the anointed one, Ephesians two and one. And you had the quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, who was the law, statutes and commandments given to? OK, let's get it. Uh, Psalms 147. Let 
me one second here. This damn thing, man. Psalms 147. In 19, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Okay. The law, statutes, and commandment and trespasses dealt with the sins under that first covenant. Okay. And when you get, uh, let's get Hebrews, the ninth chapter, real quick. Hebrews 9. In 15, for, and for this cause, he is the mediator of a new testament, a new covenant that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Whose transgressions were under that first testament? Which nation of people agreed with Moses and said, we will do all that you say that the heavenly father tell us to do? Who made that covenant with the heavenly father? The Israelites. Who transgressed that covenant? The Israelites. So now he is the mediator of a new covenant that through his death, he can redeem the transgressions that were under the first testament that that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. All right. And that, that goes back to the promise ultimately that was given to Abraham, his seed, Isaac and Jacob of the promised land where the, 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 the kingdom of heaven is going to be set up starting at Jerusalem. So the, 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 the covenants and the sins and those who were dead in sins are, you know, these, these Israelites. And we're quickened through Yahweh Shai. Okay? This applies to you right now who are watching this video. You were dead in your sins. You have been quickened through the Holy Spirit made alive in these latter days. Remember your dead bodies were lying in the street of the great city? So the spirit has quickened us just like it quickened these Gentiles here in this story as the gospel began to be spread abroad from Jerusalem to these various different regions where Israelites were. It says where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the, the, the devil. OK. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And what ca who ruled the Greco-Roman Empire? Edomites. Okay? The Edomites, man. That, the beginning of this stage of us becoming hardcore Gentiles and separated from the father came through the Greek captivity. Okay? Jake had been going off amongst all of these captivities, but it was the Greek captivity along with the Roman, the Greco-Roman captivity, the third and fourth beast in Daniel, the seventh chapter, where the Israelites were absolutely broken and separated, man. Just got nasty. But there was a fateful remnant among the Jews because the tents of Judah had to be raised up first. And we'll get into all of that. Ephesians 2 and 2, where in time and past time past, you walked according to the course of this world, bowing down to idols, Okay, uh, 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 we our favorite scripture, First Corinthians twelve and two. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away of these dumb idols, even as ye were led, because that was the curse. You would be scattered among the heathen and serve those idols, but a remnant would always return. <laughs> OK, and that spirit now works in the children of disobedience, the two thirds, man. You had them back then. The way that our people act is a result of idol worship, listening to Esau. OK, not following after the, 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 the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Among whom also we all had our conversation because we were among the heathen learning the wicked ways, man. Among also. We all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So when, when Israel was in that rebellious spirit, they, they were the children of wrath. 
Okay, they, they, they weren't in good graces and favor with the Most High. They were a no people, as it says in the book of Peter, but now are the people of the Heavenly Father. Just like now, in a place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, when you're not the Lord's people, all right, your, his name ain't on you. Let's get Isaiah 63. When his name ain't on you, you're a bastard. So you had to, the, the nation of Israel had to be adopted back, okay, to the Most High through Yahweh Shai. Let's get real quick <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. One second here. Goodness gracious. The prince of the power of the air. All right. <laughs> Isaiah 63 and 17. Oh, Yahweh, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our heart from thy fear? It was, hey, it was, that's how it was written. Return for thy servants' sakes the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. We only have 40 years of peace in our land. Okay, our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearers rule over them. They were not called by thy name. See, the Lord took his name off of us. We were not his people. And that's when we were Gentiles. Okay. Doing the works of the heathen. So we were the children of wrath. But through Yahweh Shai, we're quickened. We're brought back. Through the Holy Spirit says, but God, who was rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Yahweh Shah HaMashiach by grace, are ye saved. All right. So we're quickened through the spirit, you know, through his resurrection. You know, what did he eventually do? He went back on the right hand side so that he can send down gifts unto men. In the form of the Holy Spirit so that we can conquer death as well, man. And that's what happened through those Gentiles at that time. And we're going to show you the controversy. Okay. And have raised us up together and has made us to sit together in heavenly places in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Yahweh Shai. And that's happening in this time. All right, it happened back then. Okay, the you know the you know the preaching of the word, you know from the circumcision, you know the, the, the went out preaching and the, and the Gentiles woke up, man, and they, they were fervent. Okay, it says, "For by grace are ye saved through faith." You see, it's no longer by the uh, 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 the technicalities of that first covenant that you're saved, but through through grace, okay, and faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the Most High. Now, the law still stands, all right, but our way back to the Father is through faith, which through faith, of course, you're going to keep the laws to the best of your ability, okay, but it's more of an inward man, all right, it's more of a renewed mind, in or uh, respect and obedience being in order it's all of that okay taking heed uh, uh, bringing out the prophecies man you got a lot of guys who boast in this and that and what they do but they ain't talking about what the lord doing because they have interest in this current world anyway it says not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Yahweh Shah HaMashiach unto good works, which is which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So this was all set up from the foundation of the earth. We're just those vessels as our brothers were back then, the Gentiles, the brothers and sisters who woke up. Well, now we're those vessels. All right. It says now here's the point. Wherefore, remember that be ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. So vocab was making a point. It says in the flesh, dude. All right. Now, what, what does it mean by Gentiles in the flesh? Okay. It, it mean, by the things you were doing. 
See? Those idols you were serving, those those uh, flesh fleshly lust that consume your your mind and you you rebelled against the heavenly father and your doings and your uh, diet and your your thought process. That made you an enemy of the heavenly father, that made you a gentile. That took his name off of you. And that's been the problem with the chosen seed going back to Adam. Disobedient from the breath, the way that we are to walk in. The sons of God, the same thing, got among the heathen. And what were they doing? Uh, basically, uh, getting with their women, bowing to their gods, same thing Solomon did. That's always been the narrative. So in, in times past, you were Gentiles in the flesh. Remember, this is speaking to the saints who were at Ephesus, scattered in this region, heard the word being preached and converted, who are called uncircumcision. See that? Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Okay? So this was the controversy dealing with uh, the Jews and the Gentiles. All right? The, 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 the circumcision called, all right, these Gentiles uncircumcised, meaning they were what? Forbidden. They were profane. Now, real quick, where did that go back to? Let's give you a quick understanding here in the book of Maccabees. Okay, now Maccabees was, uh, the, this is the, the, the third beast. Okay. Within these the uh, a particular, you know, four beasts that scattered uh, Israel and Judah. Okay, this is the leopard, which is the Greeks. Okay, and and it says, and I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings. Who are the four wings? Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. Okay, the four generals of Alexander the Greek. Out of Alexander uh, the Greeks, uh, when he died, you know, these four generals, you know, they start warring with each other over who's going to be the king. Out of the uh, Seleucid Empire came uh, uh, Antiochus. And when you read First Maccabees, okay, the uh, first chapter, it talks about that history. Okay. So among this nation, as the Greeks are ruling and conquering, okay, verse 10, it says, And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, okay, son of Antiochus the king, who had been hostage at Rome, all right, and he reigned. So in those days went there out of Israel wicked men wicked men and so the Israelites are among this kingdom and what happens who persuaded many saying let us go make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us for since we departed from them we have much sorrow sellouts so this device pleased them well and certain of them all right were so forward therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the, of the heathen. Okay, so there, there you go. Israel again, playing the harlot, bowing to these different idols. Okay, what happened? They started doing after the manners of the heathen, whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen. When you look up the word gymnos, it means naked, gym. They were working out naked. Jake, our people started to do that. Okay? That's how you know the, the remnants of Greek culture are here in this beast system as well because the beast system started with the Greeks. So they, uh, it says in, in, in verse 15, what did they do when they took on these particular philosophies and idols? Verse 15, and made themselves uncircumcised. And forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold, uh, sold to do mischief. Now, they did physically stop circumcising their children because the Greeks were putting women who circumcised their children to death. Right? 
but the uncircumcised really it's also a spiritual thing meaning you're because if you weren't circumcised what what were you you were cut off from among your people that was looked at as heathenistic so the stigma when you go down the line follow because eventually they, they raised their children in these customs eventually those children raised their children in these customs and it was on and on and on but you always had a remnant starting with the maccabees of israelites who said hell nah we're not gonna do after the manner of the heathen and they fought keep you see <laughs> oh man let me get that one scripture profess This is the book of 2 Maccabees, the 6th chapter, in the 6th verse, it says, so we're just getting history on uncircumcision, okay? Because we're commanded to circumcise our children, but it's also a spiritual thing. They look down upon these Gentiles, because at the time that Paul is on the scene and the disciples, you know, the, the, the descendants had, you know, kept living all the way into the, you know, the uh, Roman Empire, which is the fourth beast. So you had these Israelites who have marinated themselves into heathen culture. But it goes back to this primarily. This is. um, But you also had the Jews, the circumcision who stuck to the customs and we'll explain that all to you in just a minute so this was uh <laughs> verse four this was was happening man wow i start at one not long after this the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and not to live after the laws of god and to pollute also the temple in jerusalem and to call it the temple of jupiter olympus okay and that of Garzim, the Jupiter of the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in this place. Verse 4, the temple was filled with riot and revelings by the Gentiles who dallied with harlots and had to do with women. And Jake joined those customs. They got they took on the customs of the Gentiles and became Gentiles. OK, it says and had to do with women in the, the uh, circuit of the holy places. OK. Which you can't deal with women and go into the holy place. That's how you know sex on the Sabbath wasn't permitted. Anyway, it says, and besides uh, that brought in things that were not lawful. Okay, and the altar was filled with profane things, which the law forbid it. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient fast or to profess himself to be a Jew. So this... The, the Israelites really being the culture being beat out of them. All right. And in masses, you know, be, you know, following after these different customs, it goes back to this. And there was a lot of friction. There was even a point where the Maccabees put Jake to death, who was going off and following af after these customs. So they always look down on them. All right. Enter Yahawashai, who who comes when the Romans are ruling. OK, you know, eventually he 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 goes out, he's preaching, you know, the downtrodden, the, you know, Israel, you know, the, having faith in him. Then he dies and, you know, his sacrifice leads to the Holy Spirit being put up on the Gentiles. OK, those Israelites who were uh, 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 scattered in these regions in Ephesus. Who were strangers to 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 the Commonwealth and everything that came with, it, you know, the promises who had fell away, they were brought back in through faith. So let's read Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. OK. And let's get the book of. Uh, First Corinthians 7 and 18. Is any man called being uh, circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Is any called an uncircumcision? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing but the keeping of the commandments of God. That's all is centered around. 
you had those who were circumcised in a sense yeah they were raised in the customs okay they were raised in the customs you can't be physically uh, circumcised and then glue the, the penis skin back on all right although jake tried that <laughs> all right this is speaking in a spiritual sense okay and then if you're uncircumcised and you're coming in through faith don't try to uh, 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 be caught in that mindset that you can be saved by the first covenant standard okay Romans 2 and 25 for circumcision verily profited if thou keep the law but if thou be a breaker of the law thy circumcision is made uncircumcision alright so the, 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 those who were of the circumcision were raised in the laws okay <laughs> that, that's all that meant all right they were the natural branches they were a result of the maccabean empire you know the hasmonean dynasty all right you had those who uh were keeping to the traditions and fought for some sort of uh re you know relevance in the roman rule all right and then came, you know, uh, John the Baptist, you know, he separated from the temple when he preached Yahawashai. Okay, and then the, these particular downtrodden Israelites who were scattered started hearing a word and they were quickened through faith, the same as you. Okay, so vocab doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Okay, even let's look up uncircumcision. You'll get all of the meat off the bone, you know, for you newcomers. This is, you know, for the people who, you know, need these lessons. You know, we're going into, we're going into this right now. Strong's G203, Akrabustia, Akrabustia. Circumcision of the penis, and that goes back to Abraham, you know. Um, having a fork skin uncircumcised a Gentile a condition in which the corrupt desires rooted in the flesh were not yet extinct you see that and you have our people in that Gentile uncircumcised mindset into this day the thing is these Israelites who were in these predicaments who weren't raised in the customs who were uncircumcised who were you know, corrupted by the desires and bowing to idols, heard the word and was like, uh, I'm, I, I believe that. I'm going to repent. Okay? <laughs> and Paul is one of the, the, the men who went and preached to them. Okay? Let's get the book of uh, Galatians 1 and 15. But when it pleased God, this is Paul speaking, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. All right, he, he had to accept it in the spirit. Because remember, Paul was a part of that circumcision mindset. And when he was doing that, he was persecuting these uh, 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 Israelites. They called them common, unclean, unholy. They can't come back to the heavenly father. They're cut off. That's how they looked at the uncircumcision. But through Yahweh Shai, the uncircumcision were brought back. They were quickened. Galatians 2. And 7. But contrary wise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. All right. Remember, the tents of Judah had to be saved first. So among the circumcision. OK, and how was Peter? Peter was of the circumcision. He was raised in the laws and customs. How do we know that? Because you have this narrative that all the Jews denied the Messiah. That's not true. <laughs> all of the disciples were Israelites. All right. And they were what you would call Jews. Now, we were called Jews in the Babylonian captivity. And ultimately, what it was talking about was Judah, Benjamin or Levi. And it was like a mocking and derogatory term, you know, then. 
you know, one of those Jews, the Jews language. But ultimately, it was Judah, Benjamin and Levi who were primarily in that captivity. OK, so those who stuck to the customs eventually all the way up through the Roman Empire, you know, they were called the circumcision or the Jews. All right. You have Judah. All right. Which that's what Jew is short for Judah. And you had the kingdom of Israel and you had the kingdom of Judah. All right. The other tribes. And then you had the, the three tribes, Judah, Benjamin and Levi. All right. They are the ones who were primarily on the scene in Jerusalem and scattered throughout these regions when Yahweh came on the scene. All right. So. Peter was of the circumcision. How do we know that? All right. This is Acts 10 and 14 when, you know, Peter received this vision of these unclean beasts, which was symbolic of the Gentiles and told to eat, which eat in our culture is synonymous with, you know, ingest to take in this understanding. OK, because remember, the, the Gentiles were looked down upon amongst the Jews. All right. Now, as Yahweh Shai walked and preached, the disciples were being shown that it were going to be the Gentiles, the, the lowly, the downtrodden, who pretty much were going to be down and receive him and receive their word. But according to prophecy, the tents of Jude, uh, Judah had to be raised up first. Remember, Zechariah 12 and 7, the Lord shall also save the tents of Judah first. OK. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. It's order. So he had the Yahweh when he came on the scene. He primarily was, you know, uh, his disciples, all right, were, were from amongst the circumcision, all right? Even Matthew, he was what? A uh, uh, tax collector. Those were Levites. He was dealing in the temple. All right. These these were Israelites who were pretty much raised in the customs. Yahweh Shai came from the the, 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 the the royal lineage of David. OK, they were in they were they were keeping the laws. They were they were of the circumcision. Now. This in these times, the tents of Judah were raised up first as well through going out and preaching. Now. Going back to Acts, the 10th chapter, what did Peter say when he thought that the unclean animals was synonymous with him eating them? In this vision dealing with Cornelius, an Israelite, Acts 10 and 14. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that are, it says Jewish. All right. Laws have declared impure and unclean. From a child up, Peter was do, keeping the laws. He, ne he never, his, his parents didn't teach him that. Okay? So he, as we read in Galatians, uh, the uh, second chapter, he was the apostle to the circumcision. All right? Those particular uh, Levites, Judites, Benjamites who were uh, uh, raised in the customs. And Paul, all right, was an apostle to the, the, the Gentiles. All right? And many of the circumcision many of the jews accepted yahweh you have this narrative that the jews all of the jews rejected yahweh and then it was opened up to the gentile that's not true all of the jews didn't uh, uh deny yahweh as a matter of fact when the word was being preached in the book of acts acts six and seven and the word of god increased as the apostles went out preaching and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of priests, a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. All right, because, you know, those, those priests were heavy in that first covenant being the only way in the temple. And so a lot of them were even being obedient to the faith, man. So you have. All right, the, the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, the Israelites who were ra not raised in those customs and you have. The circumcision. Let's read the word circumcision. This was the, the, the controversy. As the preaching of the word went out, those Jews who were raised in the customs saw all of these, these downtrodden Israelites, these Gentiles, you know, waking up fervent. They were like, hell no. Nah. No, y'all are no people. Y'all through. So the word is per it 
or may circumcise the act or right of circumcision which that's a part of our laws day of the circumcision is a term used of the jews so the jews are synonymous with the circumcision the jews are those who were raised in the customs they felt privileged jew duh in the hebrew is yahawada it says or of followers of yahawash gathered among the jews okay because you even had the Jews amongst the believers in Yahawashai. That was the circumcision. Okay, but they believed on Yahawashai. State of circumcision metaphorically. Followers of Yahawashai separated from the unclean multitude and, un, and truly consecrated to God. All right. The extinct of passions and removal of spiritual impurity. See that? So the Jews... Going back to Ephesians, the second chapter. Let's read it again. Ephesians 2 and 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. Who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, the Jews. All right. In the flesh made by hands, the physical circumcision. That was a big thing, you know, <laughs> They were you had particular of the Jews telling the Gentiles, if you're not circumcised, you can't receive the Holy Spirit when they already were receiving the Holy Spirit in uncircumcision, just as Abraham. He was uncircumcised, wasn't he? When the Lord first came to him, Abram, he wasn't circumcised. And the Lord dealt with him, man. So that that's the, that, that represents us being brought back to, to our legacy as Abraham was brought back to his legacy as the son all right of the heavenly father through the sons of god going back to adam through seth all right through uh noah shem or faxad eber so forth abraham came from that line all right but when the lord came to him he was not he uncircumcised so it's by grace it's by favor the heavenly father had already chosen abraham it wasn't by his righteousness and, and, and the fact that he was so perfect in the law. Now, he kept the laws once he uh, woke up, just like we're keeping the laws to the best of our ability. OK, but the promise was before the law. How about that? <laughs> so circumcision made by hands. They they called you. All right. They, they talked down on you. They called you common, which means Levitically unclean profane that's how the jews looked at the gentiles right it says that at that time ye were without hamashiach all right this is to the saints who have what been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins the israelites what is he saying to them that at that time ye were without hamashiach being aliens from the commonwealth of israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Now, who are the promises, okay, in the covenants given to, according to Paul himself? Now, does the Bible contradict itself? Y'all know where we're going. And you bring this out to a Christian, boy, they, they don't know. They, 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 they act like you didn't even read it. This is uh, Romans 9 and 4. Who are Israelites? To whom, to whom, let me let me start at three. For I wish that myself can be accursed from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises, who are, who are the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, okay, of whom as concerning the flesh Hamashiach came, who is over all God blessed forever. Aman. Okay. Not as though the word of the most high have taken none effect for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they the children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Okay. In the elect. Okay. Uh, through Jacob, Isaac and Jacob, man. And not everybody who calls himself an Israelite is right it's all about the elect man so going back here okay that at that time 
All right, ye were without Hamashiach being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And that's how we were. Okay. But now in Yahweh Shai, ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Hamashiach. All right. How were you made nigh under that first covenant by the blood of the calf, the bull, or whatever you sacrifice, whatever lawful, all right, accepted, you know, animal sacrifice was accepted for the situation. But now it's through the blood of Hamashiach that you're brought nigh to the Heavenly Father through Yahawashai. For he is our peace who have made both one. All right, because you had all of this bickering, you had all of this back and forth between the Jews. I mean, they were going crazy. All right. I mean, and the whole Bible talks about it. Uh, the, the, the whole when you read the New Testament, that's what it's about. The Jews and the Gentiles are the Israelites who were born in the customs and the Israelites who have been scattered and who had bowed to those different idols. But see, the Lord always left the remnant so that the word can go out. OK. Acts chapter 13. <laughs> and 44 in the, in the next Sabbath day Paul turns to the Gentiles It says in the next Sabbath day Came almost the whole city together To hear the word of God But when the Jews saw the multitudes They were filled with envy And spake against those things Which were spoken by Paul Contradicting and blaspheming Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold And said it was necessary That the word of God Should have first been spoken unto you all right, the tents of Judah had to be raised up first. But seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy to do those who didn't listen, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. All right, for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, okay, to the Israelites, these Gentiles who were among the heathen, okay, dispersed. Okay, matter of fact, real quick. John the seventh chapter in the thirty eighth verse it says let's see here. Yeah, there we go. Matt, John 7 and 35, then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find them? Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? See, the dispersed among the Gentiles are synonymous with the Gentiles. OK, let's look at the word dispersed. Real quick. Diaspora, the diaspora, man, the scattering Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. Of the followers of Yahweh scattered abroad among the nations. So you had the Israelites who were scattered among the nations, and then some of them, you know, the, the who who were following after those gods, turned back through the preaching of Yahweh. That's the Gentiles. Okay? That's the Gentiles, man. <laughs> yep. NLT, the Jewish leaders were puzzled by this statement, saying, where is he planning to go? They asked, is he thinking of leaving the country and going to the Jews in other lands? Maybe he will even teach the Greeks. <laughs> All right, because those Jews who were in those other lands were synonymous with Greeks, man. They, they took on those Greek customs, man. OK, that's even in the scriptures, man. The Grecians. All right. But it's so much to go into. All right. That uh, let's go right back here. This is. Because uh, Jake became Greeks. Even in this captivity, the, the you know, I'm, I'm a Greek. I'm a, you know, they take on the Greek philosophies, but they're still Israelites. But this is in a Greek fraternity. With a Greek brand on them. 
And when you're in that, you bow to Greek gods. Okay, I know that for sure. All right. Acts 13 and 46. Okay, or 47. For so have the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be salvations unto the end of the earth, because the Israelites will be scattered. It started at the word being preached in Jerusalem, but then the Lord even said, we're going to go to the uttermost parts of the world, man, preaching, waking up. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified, and as many as were ordained to eternal life, Believed those who are ordained unto eternal life according to the holy scriptures are the Israelites. Okay, it's the Israelites, man. So going back, let's see here to Ephesians. Okay, in the second chapter and the thirteen verse, it says, "But now in Yahweh Shai Hamashiach." Ye who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Hamashiach, for he is our peace who made all right, both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us. OK. And taking away, you know, the, the, the bringing us the grace and that second covenant is that's now our way back. If it was by the first covenant, we would forever be cast away. Okay, having abol abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinances, meaning the technicalities of that first covenant. He abolished that. He didn't take it. See, he didn't come to take away the law. All right. But he, he, he uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law. Okay, the, the, the curse that came with, you know, the, uh, you know, the technicalities. And if you don't, you know. He took that burden away so that we can be covered under his blood. Now, the the the, the curses still we we still have to go through our punishment. All of the captivities were already prophesied. However, in this one, you know, uh, uh, we're now covered under grace to where we can be perfect through through predestination, not so much of the keeping of the law, but through what the Lord's will, his his glory, his mercy. And that's the Gentiles, the mercies of David. The, the David committed some serious offenses. He was an adulterer. Did not the nation of Israel commit adultery against the most high? But through what Solomon, David received mercy. And through Yahweh Shai, the house of David receives mercy. Not being judged according to, you know, the, their actions, but through mercy and them being sorrowful, man. Like David, he cried unto the Lord. So this ain't saying he took away the law. See what this says in the NLT. He did this by ending the system of the law. The, what was the system of the law? That first covenant and its commandments and regulations. Okay, if you didn't keep the Sabbath, you weren't perfect in the Sabbath, you would be cut off. If you didn't keep the Passover, you were cut off. You didn't do this, you cursed. So we would have, we would have, this flesh would have kept us perpetually separated from the Lord. So he took away that system. And now the, the, through the Gentiles, through the, the, you know, we're brought back through what? The believing, the faith, man. He had made peace between the Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups through his son. And that blood was only shed for the Israelites. Acts, the fifth chapter. OK, and then I'll read through the rest of that. It'll be over Acts five and twenty nine and thirty. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shah, who he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath the Most High exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. Who was John a Baptist in, in, the, in the wilderness teaching the baptism to? Huh? Everybody? Acts 2 or Acts 13 and 24. And when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the children of Israel. 
It said many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God in Luke. So, <laughs> verse uh, 16, so let's read 15 again. Having abolished in his flesh, okay, the enmity, even the law and commandments, that was causing so much friction and confusion. So if the Lord made it through, it's through him. This is your high priest. And that's what John was saying. This is he. <laughs> All right. I baptize with water, but he, he this one that's coming is going to baptize you internally. And John was of the children of Levi. Specifically of the loins of Aaron through Abijah. OK, it says for to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace and that he might reconcile. All right. How do you read you being brought back to something? None of the heathen were under that first covenant, so they didn't get cast away from the heavenly father to even need to be reconciled. The heathen will be under the Israelites and learn righteousness. And you Edomites will be destroyed. It says to reconcile that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. OK, and came and preached peace to you. OK, which were afar off and them and to them that were nigh. So to those of you who were in Jerusalem, those of you who were scattered in these nations, those of us who are afar off over here in the Americas, this is a scattering for through him. We both have access by one spirit unto the father, because that is the high priest. You had access to the father through Aaron under that first covenant. Now it's through Yahweh Shai and he's in the heavens. So we don't have to go to Jerusalem. We don't have to go. We are Jerusalem. Now we have access. That's what it's all about. Access to the father. Okay. And the Israel, the Gentile, we were, we were cut off from that access. But now through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, we're able to have this. <laughs> where we have access. All right. Therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, all who were Israelites. OK, Yahweh Shai himself being the chief cornerstone. All right. Of the building, the tabernacle of David. In whom all build the building fitly framed together, groweth unto a, uh, a holy temple in the Lord. Okay, and that's the tabernacle of David, and that's described in Revelation 21 as Israelites. Okay, the, the, on the gate, the 12 disciples, on, uh, also the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, the names of the 12 disciples. Okay. Uh, uh, then, then it talks about the 144 cubits, which make forth the spiritual temple in whom ye are builded together for an habitation of the most high through the spirit. So that concludes the breakdown of Ephesians, the second chapter. Let's see here. Hopefully you all edified. This guy is pathetic, man. On to the next. Shalom.